Hey, John, congratulations on the win. Uh, I guess just a thought on, on the night and the atmosphere and, and how everything went for you today. Yeah, I think I think the first thing is to say a massive, massive thank you to the, the Edmonton fans. I mean, the people that travelled from wherever they travelled from, BC, all over the country. I've seen people from Ottawa in my hotel. I mean, people are travelling to see this team and the atmosphere was electric, absolutely electric. The um, you know big moments in the game, you know the fans were with us all the time, and uh, I really feel, and this team feels that the country's behind them. You know, from the minute we got the plane here, this city supported us. When we arrived at the stadium, the fans were rocking the bus. I mean, it's 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 like something we've never experienced. So. Hey, John, you've got uh, two goals from Jonathan David now in two games. How important is it for you to see him get going? Yeah, I mean, it's brilliant. He's uh, he's in good form at his club at the moment. And it's just keeping things simple for Jonathan. Like, he doesn't need to, you know, do all these things in and around the field. He, he has to work hard off the ball. He knows that. But he knows he has to be in those areas when the opportunities come. And if he's in those areas, we know what's going to happen. It's uh, He's a special talent, a real special talent. And, you know, hope, hoping that this, uh, this goal streak continues. Thank you. Joshua followed by John Molinaro, please. Hey, John, with four, essentially four kind of forward players, um, did you achieve the balance in the midfield that you really wanted to in this game? Yeah, absolutely. I think the uh, the reality around around the midfield was, you know, you're trying to break a, a deep deep block on on a turf field. And the, it took, I think it took 20 minutes. We got going. We were, we were good in the first 20. And we started to get a little bit stuck. We got involved in, we got involved in some of that dark arts of, you know, those little fouls and then slowing the game down. And then we just lost momentum and rhythm. So I didn't, I didn't think the, the balance was, was too much of an issue. The issue for me was just the forwards finding their rhythm and loading the line. I think they they were playing, um, quite individually at times in that first half, after the first 20 minutes, they, they, they lost their rhythm. But I think after half time, you know, we made it clear they had to load that line, you know, the, the sort of threat level by just positioning creates a massive threat to that back four. And then it opened more space for, you know, the Sam Adekubias, the Richie Larry is wide. And then it, you know, you, they started moving. And when they start moving that, that front four, if they start connecting together, I mean, that's a special group of players. So, yeah, we're really happy with that, John. I mean, the, the possession was decent. And that was a stubborn Costa Rican team that has been pre- uh, training for 10 days in, in its own country, you know, preparing for this match. And I thought they did a good job at stifling us. And this is World Cup qualification. You, you take your three points. Thank you, John, followed by Peter Galindo. And then Stephen Sandor, please. Thanks, Richard. Hi, John. Uh, congratulations on the win. Um, you mentioned, you know, Samuel Adekube there briefly in your comments um, but to the previous answer. I was just wondering if you could sort of give your evaluation on him tonight because it seemed like he put in a hell of a shift. Yeah, I mean, for me, he's, he was our man of the match tonight. He uh, he just showed, you know, a new level for for him playing in that shirt. You know, it's it's been a tough journey for Sam when I when I first came in. We had tough conversations for the for the first two years. You know, I, I pushed him hard, and and I was clear that he had to move to that next level because I felt he had the potential to play at that next level, and he did. And I think coming in, he's come in with a different level of confidence. You know, playing in the Turkish league, the intensity of the fans, the intensity of those games, and that's really helped him. He's been you know, top, top level in training. And, and as I say, when he's in training, he's up against some top, top wingers. So tonight for me was one of those statement performances from Sam Adekube and it keeps showing us that we've got so much depth in this team. You know, Sam started tonight, usually it's Richie on that left and Ali Johnston on the right. Um, and we were able to sort of rotate that. And, you know, part of that's with 
one thought in mind for Mexico as well. So yeah, big big performance tonight, and you know, I'm pleased you've you've pointed him out there, John. Thanks, John. Congrats. Thank you, Peter. Followed by Stephen Sander, please. Hi, John. Congratulations on the win. Um, I know it was a brief appearance, but what did you make of, of EK's debut and, and what have you made of him in, in training so far this week? Well, I think first things first, he's cup tied now. So that's <laughs> that's good news for Canada. He's not going to Nigeria or England. So that's, uh, you know, that was a key goal tonight. But he, he earned that spot. I mean, I, I said this to the players, no one's getting any free caps this week. And if you don't perform in training, you know, the, the things that we wanted to see, you won't be playing. Uh, and to be fair, EK has been sharp. You know, the small side of games, he's he's banging goals. He's, he's a real poacher. And I think tonight you'd just seen if he'd had a bit longer, I think, yeah, he might have found the back of the net. In fact, I felt sorry for him a bit because when he came in, we started closing the game up. I think if we were 2-0 up or, you know, a more comfortable lead, we could have stayed expansive and, and give him a good 10, 15 minutes where he can uh, maybe grab a goal. But I thought he was disciplined and in the transition, I think you see he's got good qualities. Thanks, John. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll wrap up with Stephen Sander, after which we will bring up uh, player of the match, Sam Atacube. Stephen, for the Canadian press, please. Uh, John, obviously a, a big moment for Alfonso Davies being at home in front of all of these fans are welcoming him. Did, did you feel he looked a bit nervous and maybe was trying to do a little too much in this game? You talked about the forwards being a little individual. and I mean, the one thing the fans want is Fonzie on the ball. The next thing they want him to do is dribble. So as I say, I'll never take that out of his game. But, you know, the, the conversation tonight, uh, I had a good good chat with uh, the Chicago Bulls coach, Phil Jackson, yesterday at a... I had, had a good period of time with him and I shared some of his thoughts with the team before we went onto the field tonight. Like it, it's not easy. Like he feels that he's got to perform at levels way, way and beyond, you know, what what he really needs to do. And, you know, again, the conversations were, you know, quite simple that we actually don't need anything more from you. We don't need superstar moments. We just need you to play at your maximum intensity. And, and your maximum effort, and that will be enough for us. Uh, and unfortunately, these games, you know, people feel like they have to they have to push that next level. But, you know, I'll never criticise Alfonso because the one thing I've always said to him, look, son, if you lose that ball, go and win it back. And 99% and of the time, yeah. you'll go and win that ball back for us. So I'll not take that out of the game. He's going to slowly learn and mature about you know, moments where he should be dribbling and where he could, you know, release the ball. But on a night like this, let him have his moment. And, uh, you know, I think against Mexico, you'll see, uh, you know, a different type of performance. John just referred to you as the man of the match for for, for the, the game today. And he talked about how you've come along in the hard conversations you've had. Do you look at a game like this and look back maybe at your journey with the national team? Yeah, it's nice to be man of the match, but, you know, we have a brotherhood here and we sacrifice ourselves for the shirt, you know, a lot, only 11 players can play and we have a very competitive squad and, you know, I'm just happy to be here and I'm happy to contribute and ultimately we, we know where we want to get to when sacrifices have to be made and, yeah, at times I have to make that sacrifice, but Alistair made it today, Kyle Larry made it today, a team made it today and it just shows the mentality of the group, you know. We're all here for each other and we know what we want to get to and what our ambitions are. Thank you, Joshua Club, please. Hey, Sam. John mentioned that um, he spoke to famous Bulls coach uh, Phil Jackson and he said he shared some of those words of wisdom with you guys before the game. What, what were some of those things that, that he shared and, and did they have an impact on you guys? Yeah, definitely. He talked about fundamentals, you know, the best teams do the fundamentals consistently. He also talked about, you know, your last act is your last act. It doesn't matter what you did this game. It's, it's about focusing on the next game, and we have to adapt that adopt that same mindset. We know we have a tough game coming on Tuesday against Mexico. It's a very good team in CONCACAF, and ultimately we're one point off of first, and we know what our ambitions are, and 
it's time to move on and focus on the next the next match. Thank you, Antonin from RDS. S'il vous plaît, Antonin. Thank you. Hey, Sam. Uh, a lot was uh, was said about the uh, the atmosphere tonight and how many people were going to be here. How was it like actually playing this game in front of 50,000 uh, Canadians? Yeah, it was electric. You know, I think Alberta is underrated for how passionate their fans are when it comes to sports, you know, and ultimately we were so thankful. They were loud. They were electric. We really needed them. And it was a difficult game. And ultimately the fans got us over the line and we couldn't be any more happy. Thank you. Guillermo and then Peter Galindo. Guillermo, please. Yeah, thank you, Sam. I'm pretty sure that you already know that Mexico lose in U.S. So uh, what do you think? Because this is uh, maybe the best scenario to face Mexico. You are unbeaten. You just win this game. And you can make a, make a valid tie what's happening in a Azteca Stadium. Yeah, um, I think the scoreline with the U.S. Mexico doesn't matter. We know how good Mexico is. You know they've they've been known as the best team in Concacaf, and even though they lost today, they still have a lot of quality, and they can still be dangerous next match. And ultimately, we have to focus on what we can do and how we can stop them from from doing, getting their best out of themselves. And it's going to be another tough game, but you know we went there and we got a result in a tough stadium, one of the most toughest in the world, and. We know our quality and we know what we can do and we're just focused on that coming forward. Thank you. Three more questions. Peter Galindo, followed by Laura Armstrong and then Derek from Post Media, please. Thanks, Richard. Hey, Sam, thanks for speaking to us. Um, <clears throat> you were fulfilling a lot of responsibilities out there tonight from you know dropping in next to the center backs and going up and down in your usual role as a fullback how comfortable did you feel fulfilling all of those responsibilities yeah our team is quite flexible and quite fluid and that's credit to the coaching staff we do a lot of tactical work when we get into camp and you know ultimately we see a flexible team out there and i was very comfortable and so were the other players yeah the, re the result was a close game but we felt that we had control and we were the more dominant side thanks sam thank you very much uh, next question, please, um, from Laura and then Derek. Hey, Sam, thanks for the time. Um, looking big picture, you mentioned being one point behind the U.S. And, the, uh, and Mexico. You're seven points ahead of Costa Rica now, unbeaten through seven games. How do you feel about where Canada stands halfway through this qualification round now? Yeah, we're happy. We know we could have picked up more points, but we're confident in our ability, and we know that the next match is going to be a tough game. But... I think looking back, we're in a good situation and ultimately we know what our ambitions are and we just have to keep pushing for three points every game. But we are happy, but we're not content. Thank you, Laura. And wrap up with Derek from Edmonton, Sun Edmonton Journal. Hey, Sam, thanks for doing this. I just want to ask you about the second half. It looked like you guys were a bit more... Uh, offensive you guys it looked like it was just a matter of time before you were going to score I guess did you guys get that sense as well you had a lot of chances but it just seemed like you guys came out a more confident team in that second half yeah you know it's a uh, it's a difficult game Costa Rica are a good side and it takes a while to find out how we can get the best out of ourselves on the pitch and we made some changes at halftime like normal teams do and we were able to come out and be a bit more dominant and you know, we have a lot of quality attacking players. We have Tejon, we have Alfonso, we have Kyle coming in, and we have quality like the legend of Tipa. So we're always confident in our, our ability to create chances and score goals, and we just have to keep continuing doing that.